Good morning, Cambridge Springs Elementary. This is Mrs. Walsh bringing you today's Draw Along. It is Friday, November 20th. It is the week before Thanksgiving. So for my kindergartners this week, I thought it would be fun to draw a turkey. To begin, you need a piece of paper, a pencil with an eraser, and if possible, a Sharpie or any kind of black marker to go back over your lines to make them darker. Once you have those materials, we start with the paper in portrait direction, which means that it is taller than it is wide. We need to start this turkey by drawing the beak. We need to come up at least halfway up the paper, and to find halfway, all you need to do is take the bottom edge of the paper to the top edge of the paper and carefully crease it down. That is the middle of your paper from top to bottom. I'm going to start on that line and I'm going to draw the letter V in capital form. Once you have the V on your paper, we are going to connect it with half of an oval, so it looks a whole lot like an ice cream cone. Where you had stopped the top of the V, we're going to connect with just a slight curve up towards the top of the circle and connect, which makes it look even more like an ice cream cone. But above this, we're going to draw two circles for an outline to the turkey's eyes. And then we will put the pupils inside. I'm not gonna color them in now because I will color them in later with Sharpie. His beak should have two little nostril holes. And let's go to the top of his head and do a curve out and back for a little feather and a curve out and back for a little feather. Now, to add the turkey's body, come just below where you close the top of the beak with that curved line, and let's bring a big oval body down below the turkey and connect to the other side of the beak so it sort of makes sense, and mine went a little bit high. You know what? That's no big deal. Let's just keep on going. On both sides of turkey's body, we need the suggestion of some wings. Not a lot of detail, just a curve out and a second curve and a third curve to connect. Try to line up the other side with where you started the first side. A curve, a curve, and a curve. Down below the body, we're gonna add two feet, but a foot doesn't, can't be just a line for the leg. I know a lot of people would draw it like that, but in art class, to get a little bit more realistic, we bring a second line down to give the leg some width. I'm gonna stop this line a little bit higher than where I stopped the first line because I'm gonna bring the foot back, out, and then I'm gonna curve up for one toe, curve up for a second toe, and connect to the other side. We're gonna put a couple of texture lines down that leg, and then we're gonna add a second leg down, stop about the same distance as the first inside leg, and stop the second about the same distance as the second side leg. Bring this toe back. Oh, I'm gonna bump into that one. I'm gonna let it be in front. And then we're gonna bring the foot over and a curve for a turkey toe and a second curve to connect. If you wanna add some details, we can put a little toenail on each one of these toes and even the back one too. Don't forget those texture lines. Now, we all know one of the best parts of drawing a turkey is that great, big, beautiful fan tail of theirs. I'm not gonna start my tail off to either side. I want the biggest feather behind the turkey's head, so I'm gonna center it. I'm gonna come off the sides of the turkey's head and bring my biggest feather up, around, and down so it really draws people's attention right to the center of my drawing. Artists often plan drawings like that to bring people over to look at them, especially if they're going in a museum. Did you know that? Now, on both sides of the center feather, we can come up 
and add one feather to this side. So let's symmetrically go to this side and add another feather. Now, I wanna do one, maybe two more, but I don't want them to go off the edge of the paper. So I'm gonna make these a little bit shorter and connect about halfway down the wing on both sides. And then if you're just clever enough, you can put one more baby feather out there that connects below that one. For a little bit more detail, we need the gobbler underneath of the turkey's chin. So we're gonna suggest that over there off the side of the beak. And then I like to go to the top of each one of these tail feathers and add a double stripe. And there are some fancified feathers on our Tom Turkey to celebrate Thanksgiving next week. Did you know Ben Franklin actually wanted the turkey to be our national bird? He admired the turkey so much, he thought that it would make a better representation of the United States than the eagle. But the eagle, the raptor, won out. At this point, I would change to Sharpie and I would trace over all of my lines so it darkens everything up and sharpens the image. Then I'm gonna show you a really cool trick if you happen to have markers that are water soluble. Crayolas are water soluble, Mr. Sketch are water soluble. If you have any of those types of markers, we're gonna show you how to do something cool with water soluble markers that makes adding color to your turkey super fun. I have now traced my Tom Turkey using Sharpie. And as you know, Sharpie is permanent. It will not come off. At this point, you're ready to add some color and there's a couple different things you can use. If you would just like to add color to your turkey with materials you have on hand that are pretty traditional like crayon or colored pencil, you can do that. And the example of a finished Tom Turkey color could look something like that. But I would like to show you a little trick as an art teacher that I know that's pretty cool and pretty fun. But in order to do what I'm about to show you, you need a style of marker that's water soluble. That's the opposite of Sharpie that's permanent. It needs to be a style of marker that says that it is washable. If you have such a marker, it might be something like Crayolas are considered water soluble and the Mr. Sketch marky that we some markers that we sometimes use at school are also considered water soluble. So to add color using marker instead of traditional crayon or colored pencil, which is perfectly acceptable, and if you finish your turkey with those, that is perfect. But if you want to try something new, I would like to show you something that you can do with markers that you might not know about. So if this is my Tom turkey, the main color of his body is going to be brown. I'm not gonna color the turkey in with marker. I'm going to add some color. So in his body, I'm gonna add a scribble of brown to my turkey's body, but without coloring the whole thing in. I'm also gonna do that for the top of his head. I'm gonna do that also for his wings. And there I have added brown without coloring him in. Now I'm gonna switch to a couple, couple other different colors and I am going to show you this cool process. Just a scribble here and there. I'm gonna speed this up so you don't have to wait for me to get the whole thing colored. My Tom Turkey is done being colored and now comes the magic part. The reason I had you use water soluble markers is because if you paint over top of water soluble marker with plain old water, it turns into paint on your paper. So here I have a cup of water, just plain water, and a paint brush I had on hand. I wanna start with the lightest colors first because the ink is going to get inside the paintbrush a little bit and when you rinse it, Sometimes some get stuck in there if you start with dark colors and it'll muddy your light colors. So I'm gonna get my brush wet and then I'm gonna start with yellow. I'm gonna take some water over top of the yellow 
and brush with it. And you can see the color moving away from where I scribbled a little bit. Now, I happen to know yellow is the one that works the least of all these marker colors. So this is not too impressive or spectacular yet, but the next color will show you what is more likely to happen when you do this with water-soluble markers. So here, when I do orange, it is a little bit more evident that you are moving color away from the marker and creating the color like paint across the feather. Crayolas, sometimes, especially if they're newer markers, work better, but any water-soluble marker will do. So take your water cup, watch you don't blend your colors too much and turn everything muddy, and we call this turkey a watered down turkey for this reason. If you choose to do it in water soluble marker, you have watered down the colors and turned it into paint. No matter how you chose to add color to your turkey, I hope you had a spectacular time drawing along with me today. I hope you have a happy and very healthy Thanksgiving and I will see you after Thanksgiving break. Have a great weekend, everyone.